Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-22. Our last episode found the adventurers taking refuge in a small but enjoyable Wagmar village. While attending a musical performance, they discovered that associates of the brigands that had attacked them had been present in the same tavern, but neither had noticed each other. They also garnered some information on the mysterious noble issue. We rejoined the adventurer as dawn breaks. A rooster crows in the distance as Sir Omel rises from his slumber. Looking out the second story window, he sees the warm sunshine filter in, announcing a beautiful day ahead. As he begins to dress, he notices the other bed in the room is empty and does not appear to have been slept in. He quickly looks around and grabs his weapon that was leaning against the bed. He charges into the hallway where he abruptly runs into Brother Stance. Thank the gods. There you are, said the large knight. I thought that something may have happened to you. The monk smiled and assuaged his associate's fears. Thank you, Omel. I am fine. I just needed to take care of business this morning. The knight nodded, assuming he understood what Brother Stance was talking about, but then spotted the lovely barmaid peek out of a room down the hall where the monk had just come from. A broad smile crossed his face as the young woman quickly slinked back into her room. The knight closed the door as the monk was gathering his belongings. So, Stance, how are you doing? asked Sir Omel. I am good, Sir Knight, came the reply as the monk didn't even look up from his packing. I'm looking forward to finding this noble person and our mysterious thief. He stood up and his words then trailed off as he saw a huge grin on the knight's face. The member of the Verte Order sighed deeply and folded his arms in front of him. Go ahead, speak your mind. The large knight chuckled and shook the comment off. I'm not sure what you mean, my friend, and smiled broadly. The monk rolled his eyes and began to explain. Celibacy is a suggestion with our order and not a mandate. I think you can wipe that smug look off your face, warrior. Sir Omel doubled over in laughter and gave his friend a powerful hug. She seems like a nice young lady, Stance, and you seem happier, so it's all good. The monk bowed and continued to pack his things. The others have gone over to the tavern for their morning meal. We should get going, too, he said. He paused briefly and began to speak further. If we could, uh, keep but was cut off by the Knight of Bacchus. Nothing more to be said, Padre. They nodded and continued to gather their belongings. What took you guys so long? asked Phidias the Rogue. Grish has already scarfed down two plates waiting for you. The large Zenobia nodded in agreement as he continued to shovel eggs into his mouth. Well, they weren't getting beauty sleep, quipped Yolanda Two Blades, and you two certainly need it. The pair sat down with their associates as the young barmaid brought them each plates of food. I hope you find this tasty, Father Stance, said the lovely girl as Sir Omel sprayed the table with his drink. Everyone turned to look at the warrior quizzically, but he waved it off, stammering, <coughs> Wrong pipe! My apologies. As the female left the table, the group worked on formulating their plan for the day. Harris began with, So Cade says this farmer named Noble is only a couple of miles outside of town and does have a daughter. There were no new tracks to the south, so our friend from the tavern last night with a leather bag must have gone north since there are fresh tracks that way. Since it is the only way we can since it is on the way we can probably kill two birds with one stone. I agree, said the cleric as he wiped his mouth clean with the back of his hand. The innkeeper said the stranger left early this morning on a horse similar to ours. That can't be a coincidence. The group nodded in agreement and finished their meals. Phidias called over the young barmaid to compensate her, but she declined, pointing out that the meal had already been covered. 
The gnome happily put away his coin purse as Yolanda caught the busty young woman winking at Brother Stance, causing him to flush slightly. Sir Omel also noticed and cleared his throat loudly, stating, Well, let's hit the trail. We're burning daylight. The group left the establishment with Brother Stance stealing one last kiss before walking out with his comrades. Don't forget me, urged the barmaid. Stance looked deeply into her eyes and pointed out she was impossible to forget before rejoining his friends outside. He grabbed the gnome and tossed him onto the horse he was attempting to mount with a carefree ease. Phidias thanked him and the group noticed that the monk began to hum a strange tune. Omel shook his head, grinning, but urged his mount ahead. Those are fresh tracks, commented Yolanda Two Blades, but they continue out into the plains. I think this trail leads to the farmhouse where the noble person is, they, she said a few hours later. We're here, so we might as well check on the noble first, quipped the Harris, the mage. I doubt our brigand friend returns to the village, but if he does, the tracks will tell the tale. If he uses the trail, remarked Grish. He spied the others all looking at him and added, I'm sure he would probably use the t trail. I don't think he knows we're on to him. The trail became less obvious and the group passed through some barley fields until the land opened up to a small farmhouse. Finally, exclaimed Phidias, I thought we would never get here. He slapped the reins on his horse and it began to move forward until Brother Stance moved his mount to block the way. What are you doing, snapped the rogue. There's something wrong here, pondered the monk. The group looked around and Yolanda pointed out, why is nothing moving? The group dismounted and moved their horses into the brush where they were lashed to some small saplings. A plan was formulated and the group split off and each took a side. Moving as quietly as possible, they went through the crops to mask their movement and crept as close to the house in the clearing as they could. Yolanda, Grish, and Phidias moved along the left side with the others following suit on the right. Creeping through the corn stalks, they could spot no signs of life. Once they reached the back side of the clearing, they met up with the other group. Anything? asked Yolanda. With a side-to-side -side head shake by stance, the answer was no. She continued, We need to get to the house and take a peek. It is possible that they are working in the fields. Skeptic looks crossed the faces of the group and the gnome volunteered to move forward. I'm faster than the rest of you, so I can go. If I yell, you better get there quick, though. Weapons were drawn, and the diminutive rogue sprinted across the open ground and reached the building safely. From their concealed positions, the rest of the adventurers watched as Phidias moved silently, peeking into the few windows of the farmhouse. As he rounded his way around to the front of the building, the group lost sight of him for a few minutes. I don't like this, muttered Grish under his breath. We should probably go check on him. Patience, warned Omel. He knows what he's doing. A few moments later, the demi-human came around the corner and waved to his friends to approach. The group moved ahead, scanning for threats, but saw Phidias shaking his head and announced, It's fine. Nothing alive here. The group entered the Spartan building and noticed that it was a simple farmhouse. On the floor of the main room were two twisted bodies. One, an older farmer, and the other, his younger daughter. Both had serious blunt wounds from a club-like instrument. Mr. Noble, I presume, remarked Omel. Phidias nodded and pointed out there were some papers on the table. They've been dead for quite a while, Harris said as he covered his nose. Phidias remarked they didn't have any money either or it was taken by whomever murdered them. Stance and Grish knelt down to further examine the bodies. My guess is they've only been dead a couple of days, said the cleric. Certainly not within the time frame of the Nikoloth added stance. Bugbears, came the response from Yolanda investigating the area. She held up tufts of coarse black hair, sniffing it. Has to be bugbears. They are known to have several tribes in the Northlands. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.